And there'll be a time when you don't think he's working on it, but if one day all of a sudden, you're that, that person, the God will say, okay, I'm ready to work with you now. Let's, let's get this problem solved. You know, I've been working around, I've been uh, helping uh, other people that are involved in your life, and I've been working uh, with, with uh, the, the job situation, and now I'm ready to, to answer your problem. I'm ready to give you the answer to your problem. You know, God has made this wonderful promise uh, that for I know the plans that I have for you, there are plans to help you prosper and not to harm you, but plans to give you hope and a good future. That's Jeremiah 29 and 11. But again, we've got to realize that God's time to talk is different than ours. In 1 Peter, uh, I mean, 2 Peter 3 8, it says, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like a day. Now, you may think you've waited a long time to get to answer your prayer, but as soon as it happens, God says, hey, it just, I have, you haven't been on hold very long. The Lord, it seemed like I've been on hold for years. No. Hey, the answer is right now. And, and uh, we've solved the problem. Now let's move on and go help somebody else. Also, we can be reminded that that when things are bad, things happen to good people. That God is working. Romans eight twenty eight it says, "We know that in everything, all things, God works for the good of those who love Him and are called according to His purpose." God is working for you, and He's working on your problem. Amen. Remind you of what Isaiah forty thirty one says: "They, you." Me, who wait upon the Lord, shall renew your strength. You're going to get your strength back. You might say today, I just cannot go one more step. I'm just, you know, I'm emotionally, mentally, financially, physically done. I just can't do it. I'm just, I can't go another step. Those that wait upon the Lord, they'll renew their strength. You'll wake up tomorrow morning, or you'll wake up this afternoon, and all of a sudden you'll have energy you didn't know you had. You'll have hope that you didn't know you have. You'll have a vision of, of, and a clarity in your mind of, of where you're going and what you're doing that you didn't have if you wait upon the Lord. They shall rise up with the wings of eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. These are promises to you. So what do you do while you wait? While you're on hope, what are you going to do? Now used to, before uh, I figured out a different strategy, I would just fume while I'm waiting. You know, I would just sit there on my phone, why, what's wrong with these people? You know, you know, why do I have to wait? You know, and just, just fume and, and fuss and just uh, get aggravated. My blood pressure would go up, and, you know, everything. I would just get aggravated. By the time I, the person got to me, I was in a terrible negative attitude toward that person. Now, what do you do when you're waiting upon God? What I learned to do was, okay, I'm going to be on hold for 15 minutes or less. Most of the time, 15 minutes or more. Uh, so I'm going to put my, my, my phone on speaker, and I'm going to continue to work on these little projects that I've got here on my desk. Or I'm going to, uh, I'm going to read some uh, this book that I've been reading. I'm going to take care of these little things. I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. And you know what? When you start getting busy while you're on hold, that 15 minutes doesn't seem very long. That's it right. doesn't seem long at all. And so the main thing is just don't hang up because you yeah. will, they will get to you. And God will get to you too. <laughs> but when you're on hold, I encourage you, when you're on hold for God with God and you're you're asking something and He's asking you to wait, I, I encourage you to be active. I encourage you to remember that. That the Lord said, uh, if you, while you're waiting, why don't you do something good for someone else? While you're asking me to give you something, why don't you give to somebody else of, of the meager amount of substance that you have? Why don't you share it with somebody else? And then, and then as I'm working on your problem, you'll receive a lot more. He also said, whatsoever a person sows, that will he also reap. So, and, and he that sows, uh, uh, bountifully, 
will receive a lot. He did so sparingly will receive little. So if you're asking God for a lot, He's expecting you to give a lot. If you're expecting uh, God to meet a big need in your life, you need to be meeting big needs in other people's lives in which God has given you the ability, the talents, and the skills to do that. Use your gifts and abilities to help others while you're on hold. And secondly, just believe. You know, this is something Jesus repeated over and over and over again. You know, just believe. Just believe that I'm working on your problem. Just thank, thank the Lord instead of, uh, of, of, of being uh, impatient and negative. Just say, Lord, I, 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 I'm waiting, but I know you're working on it. And I just want to thank you for me being your child that, that uh, I've actually got your phone number and I can actually get in touch with you. Psalms 50, 15, you've got God's number. Call upon me in the day of trouble. And I will hear you and I'll deliver you from all your troubles. So just be thankful that you know God's phone number and you can reach Him. And while you're on home, look at yourself and see if there's any reason that God has put you on home. Are you, are you so busy that you, you haven't really uh, <coughs> spent any time with the Lord? You haven't really prayed about it? Uh, you really, you know, you just casually mention something to God or or you have uh, gone through uh, uh, internal weeping and, and uh, discouragement, but you really, you really haven't grabbed a hold of who God is and really spent some time talking to the Lord about your problems. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, and neither is His ear tired, that it cannot hear, but... Your sins have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid His face from you, and He will not hear. Sometimes you, God talks to you about something, and He expects you to work on that sin in your life. He expects you to, to, to become better. He expects you to do what you can do, and, and uh, it's not God's problem. He's not hard hearing. Uh, you're the one that's got the problem and you need to work on it and he'll give you the strength and the ability to do that. So while you're waiting on God, just say, Lord, if there's anything I've done, I, I ask you to forgive me. If there's something I need to do better, please, Lord, help me. First John 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You don't have to continue to bear the guilt and the the shame of personal sins that happened to you years ago, just confess them and go on with faith and, and trust the Lord. Even the disciples, from time to time, they uh, were trying to do something for the Lord and they couldn't seem to get it done. They tried to heal some people and they couldn't get them healed. And they came to Jesus and said, Lord, why can't we uh, heal these people? Why can't we help these people? He said, because some things take a lot more effort than other things. Some things you don't get but by prayer and fasting. And this is in Matthew 17, 19 through 21. you got to get serious with God. The bigger the problem, the more serious the problem, the more serious you're going to have to be. Uh, you may have to pray more than one time. Now lay me down to sleep. Lord, please help me find a job Monday. <laughs> no. You know, God might look at you and laugh at you and, you know, and, uh, uh, but I mean, if, you, if you're begging him with tears and you're begging him uh, with, with your whole heart, he's listening and he wants to help you. Finally, remember this and remind yourself that he loves you. You know, he loves you. And uh, if other things are not happening the way you want to and nobody else seems to care about you or nobody else is, it seems to be uh, helping you in your your personal crisis in your life, God cares. Amen. And He is going to help you. It may take Him a while. It may take Him, uh, uh, you know, He may be doing some other things to work things out for you. But the but the the emphasis on this message is this: If God puts you on hold, don't hang up. Don't quit. Amen. Don't give up on God because He wants to answer your questions. 
he, you're, he, you're in his plans of a good future and prosperity and, and uh, a good relationships. All these things God wants for you if you'll just not hang up and give up. Please join me in prayer.